Last week, I got an email from a company called Suriziki that sells battery chargers for 12, 24, 36, and 48 volt systems, I believe. And this is perfect timing because about two, three weeks ago, we had an incident where the power went out at a relative's house and we were having to cart batteries over there. I deployed my solar panel system finally. I had just had it in storage and we couldn't get power into these batteries as fast as I wanted. And well, looks like a Ghostbusters ecto trap, ghost trap. This is the little 12 volt, 25 amp battery charger that they sent me. And already, I love the design of it. I love that it has a proper fan. I believe this is potted on the inside. And look at this, Anderson plugs. This is absolutely perfect because this is what I already use. It comes with two connectors, which they're a little bit, well, they're four millimeter squared. I don't know what the gauge is. They don't seem crazy thick. They might be fine for 25 amps, but they might not be fine for 100 amps. So let's plug this in and see how quickly we can, like if it does give proper amperage. And let's test by opening up, or I'm cleaning off my Timgot battery, which still has the debris from the roof incident on it. And then we can use the onboard BMS and the Bluetooth function to see how much power it's actually giving. Oh no, it's at 100%. I was too smart with my future. I have the air conditioner running off of this now. I had it on wall power for a little bit. And we have this draining. 7.1 amps. And this is going to directly where the connections are going on there. So this is has less resistance compared to this. And I switched the charging over to the, the to the secondary battery. So this will this will pull a little faster. My savior. You just randomly decided to come to the shop bringing yeah. the Tezzy power battery. It look, it was right there at my mom's. I grabbed it. Okay. Cuz I was there. So was Well, fine. so I just ran into a problem. I started doing a video review of that um Suzuki Suzuki battery. Yeah. But the battery I picked was fully charged. Oh, so how about this so, one? So yeah, this, this one, and this one has the Bluetooth functionality so we can see the amp reading. So I actually couldn't pick up the battery on Bluetooth. So I used this to, to wake up the battery. That was a weird glitch. Okay, so charging, 24.7 amps. Oh, it's at 68%, really? This battery? Yeah. Well, then why was it off? Temperature one. Hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I guess this thing was fine. It just, I guess I went into sleep mode or something. But the charger worked great to wake it up. And it's doing 24.5 amps. Over here we see an extra 300 amps on there. The fan of the light time inverter is ticking over a little bit more. And this battery we're pulling from this battery now. It did the opposite of what I originally thought. Because uh, I originally thought I would be charging that battery, but now I'm taking power from that battery. No so way. it's on the other end of this charger. Oh, the, and it's oh, putting into here. No way. Because I'm pulling power from there just because it's, the outlet is over there. I don't feel like going to the grid power, so I went to this power. Huh. And now here is a little bit of my secret plan. We have the Opus Mega One, which is a one kilowatt hour battery pack, has an inverter on it and can take solar power. They want to do more videos with me, so I'm going to see if they can send me 400 watts of solar panels. And I recently had an issue where I let the 1935 fridge run out of power and it defrosted. Well, what if I had the Opus Mega One running some of the things? And then I would have it cascade going through the inverter into the Suraziki charger and into my bigger battery bank. 
when it when it fills up. So I could still collect more power in my big battery setup, but I could also have that one fully charged. This would allow me to have a whole bunch of stuff well, hopefully set up in case there's another blackout so that one could be fully charged, even if these are, are, are discharged. And we could take that over to wherever the blackout is or power outage. And this would just allow me to take power from one battery and put it into another. I love that it has this fan on it. 24.4 amps. I would consider that to be as as stated because that's pretty darn close so this will be 300 watts and there's also this light on the side now one thing i thought was interesting was this oh here it is it doesn't just do the normal green red it does um green for standby Flashing red for charging. Flashing yellow. That <laughs> G flashes, that's funny. So many mistyped that. Flashes yellow, charging over 80%. Green is batteries fully charged. I really like this thing. I like this ghost trap. Um, this, this Ghostbusters ghost trap charger. And they have even bigger ones too, but they have a 50 amp one, but I said that might be a bit too much for my cables. I don't know. Because I also wanted it to be where... Oh, wow. It's... Ah, we're up to 1,000 watts. <coughs> Everything's on now. We have yeah. the 1935 fridge on. We have the air conditioner on. We have the fan on. We have this pulling power. 25 amps. I'm just trying to drain this battery faster, so I've, I keep disconnecting things, and I'm at this point where I'm just running off the Timgot battery. But man, I feel like I'm about to start a fire. I didn't, I didn't set up this system to entirely run off of this. I should have just fully disconnected the other stuff, but oh well. I'm running it off this, and to be honest, this wire isn't really heating up all that much. So, ooh. so um. That actually speak. That actually builds well. It speaks a lot to this. Uh, it's actually pretty good. Pretty thick for forty amps. It's the next day, and I ran this a little bit yesterday to run the fan and refrigerator. It's now down to sixty-eight percent. I have the MOSFET switched off. So it's hovering at a higher voltage and it thinks it's full, fully charged. If I go to here and I turn on the MOSFET, it'll allow it to charge. So So now it's charging. First to 5.8 amps. Let's see if it goes out. 13.2, 24.7. This has a really good airflow. Hello everyone. So I spent two days trying to film charging up a battery and I was waiting for it to go to the yellow indicator light. It never did. It just went from red to green. And I asked Sir Ziki about it, and they said, look at the manual. They showed me a printout saying that it doesn't do that for, for lithium iron phosphate. Well, they have a different manual. This one doesn't have any of that in it. So I think this is just in the middle of where they didn't change the sticker or the manual yet. But... This just it's, just, it's not a problem, really. It charges fine. It's just that they changed the circuit board without changing the sticker in this particular one. So it goes from blinking red to green. That's still pretty good. It 
charges really well. But I figured I would just kind of take out that whole part of the video of me trying to figure out how to get it to charge because it was a lot of faffing about and it ended up being that they just changed the circuit board and they have changed the manual and the sticker later on. They just hadn't done it for this particular one. Not really a problem. I was hoping that we, this would only take like half an hour, but we've had it for, been at it for like an hour now. And uh, at least it feels like that. But I will say, this really isn't all that warm. It just feels like a little bit above body heat, which isn't too bad. So this cooling method definitely works. It's a little bit warm in here too. This what it looks like whenever it's fully charged, where it just goes to green. In this experiment, we were taking solar power and just moving it between batteries. And that's basically my thought process for this. If we have another power outage where we need to charge up batteries, I can charge up batteries from the wall grid power here. Then if I also want to do a system where I, I move power from one battery to another and I don't have a, something to move 12 volts to 12 volts, then this could be good to pump 300 watts from one battery system to the other. Because, because I'm working with garbage and stuff that I get for free, I can't plan out having a huge power system. So I'm probably going to have a few separate solar panel systems and I can have them cascade one into the other if I need to allocate power into one. So that could work out pretty well. Looking at this, I see it must be potted inside because you can see a bit of that co potting compound coming out. Although that might not actually be the same. That might just be some silicon caulk they put on there. Well, here's something funny that I noticed. These at random are different length screws. <laughs> Which, it, honestly, I'm not really offended by because it's overkill with the screws, so I'm not too upset by that. Ah, looking at that. That's pretty good quality. So the screw length is more of just comedic. And then we have everything being potted. But there's these little, like, JTAG connections. Or whatever, whatever that would be. So you can have a serial connection into it so you can program it. That's pretty cool. Not bad at all. I'm not going to dig any deeper because I plan to use this thing. That's the entire reason why I review these. So I can have them. And I don't have to pay for them. Well, that's pretty much it. This is tested out pretty well. And running for the hour and a half that we ran it yesterday. Really didn't get all that hot at all. Compare that with, let's say, the 20 amp, 12 volt watt cycle charger. I feel like this needs a, little, a lot more airflow. And if the fan dies, it doesn't really stand a good chance of not overheating. This one, it stayed fairly cool, but the airflow isn't all that much to begin with. So I feel like if you had this mounted on a wall and the fan failed, it might still be able to cool itself. I do kind of like that. Well, thank you very much, Sir Aziki, for sending me this. I'm planning to utilize it in my ongoing experiments. And it was actually pretty nice of you to offer this because companies keep offering lithium iron phosphate batteries, but they do not want to offer all the other things. So this is really nice. Thank you very much. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and don't mind me doing another product review. And thank you very much for watching. See ya. I'm also feeling a little bit better now. Finally getting over being sick just a little bit.